Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Amazon Pro Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Eric Mistros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another corn school episode. I had the chance to catch up with Sarah Meidlinger, who is a market development specialist with Pride Seeds. Sarah and I chat about some of the considerations you're going to want to keep in mind when it comes to scouting your corn crop at this time of the year across Saskatchewan and Alberta. Check out the conversation now. So definitely get out of that truck, get in the field, do some scouting, look at different parts of the field. I know you just want to look at, you know, the best part, but make sure you're checking the low spots, the, um, the hilltops, uh, maybe a spot where you have a little bit more trash, uh, maybe some of those heavier or lighter soils. Make sure you're checking all of that and you're, you're looking at emergence and uh, even emergence is critical for corn. So that's number one, one of the most important things you can do to have a really high yielding corn crop, you know, silage or grazing. So what we, what we have here is we did a little bit of a test and we got one one thousandth of an acre and we came back five days in a row and staked um, the new emerging plant every day. So for the red would be one day, the orange another day, blue, green, you get the, get the idea. And what we're hoping to do is follow them all the way to harvest and then harvest them and then see how yield is impacted when you know a plant emerges five days later than the first plant that that came so just to see how important that even emergence is um, even emergence can be affected by soil temperature planting depth um, your residue management all sorts of things making sure that planter is properly adjusted so this is a really good time to look back okay this is how everything looks what can we do for next year um, you know, how can we adjust the planter? Is our population where we want it? Do some stand assessments like that as well. So whether you're looking at silage or grazing, what's your target population you'd be looking at? So it depends. Um, some guys will go high and go, you know, 36, 38. And you know, as long as you have the resources there, that's totally fine. Um, make sure you're watering it, make sure you have the fertility. Um, but you know, as you move short, um, into areas with with less heat units you might want to draw that population back a little bit or if you have less fertile ground or if you're maybe looking for a little bit higher quality silage you might want to pull back so I'd say most guys are in that 36 to 28 for my zone and I cover western Saskatchewan and Alberta is probably the range um, 28,000 to 36,000. So how do you go about measuring that if you're maybe you might be a first time corn grower? I, talk me through that process. So what we do is you take one one thousandth of an acre. So depending on what your row spacing is, um, we're here on 30 inch rows. So you take 17 feet, five inches. So you just grab a measuring tape, bring it out to the field, uh, set it down, count one, two, three, however many plants, multiply it by a thousand. That gives you a really rough idea of what your population is. I like to do it, you know, five, six, seven spots in a field, maybe taking a couple counts at each spot. And you'll probably notice a difference, you know, in between your less productive ground and your really high performance ground. So another thing you're looking at when you're in the field right now is weed control. Obviously you're looking at whether or not to spray. What's, what's some of your considerations there? Yeah. So getting out and scouting for weeds is going to be number one. Corn is a super poor competitor with weeds and it's going to affect the yield as soon as they're up. So this field could probably use a spray right away um, because it just it negatively impacts the yield so much. So if you can get out there, spray, talk to your retail and get that spray ordered and hopefully it's a nice calm day. We have some calm days coming up and you can get out and spray your corn crop. And another consideration, uh, I mean, you wouldn't guess it now looking at you in the sunshine, but uh, there has been some frost as of late uh, and you kind of have a message you want to tell producers. Do you want to expand on that? Yes, for sure. So this corn crop wasn't quite up yet. Um, the thing with corn is it's really sensitive in that first the 24 to 36 hours of its life when it's planted in the ground. So we don't want a cold drink of water then, that's when you're gonna have that cold injury, that inhibitional chilling. So we, for most of the corn crop, we didn't have to worry about that with the cooler temperatures, that cooler rain. Um, but some of the corn crop was up. Luckily, the growing point with corn stays well below the soil surface until it has four or five leaves up where most of it is at, you know, spike or one to two leaf. So you're gonna see some damage. It'll grow out of that. It's not, it's not gonna cause any significant yield impact. It's gonna grow out. So really just be patient. If it looks bad, give it four or five days. Go to the lake, go look at your other crops, 
go spend some time with your family, come back, it'll green up and it'll start growing. We have lots of moisture. It's gonna be a warm week, so I, I don't anticipate any issues uh, with, the, with the cooler weather and the frost and snow that we had down here. Okay, anything else you'd like to tell producers when it comes to uh, paying attention at this early season? Just, you know, get out and scout. If you have questions, please get in touch with, you know, your local market development agronomist, your retail, um, and we can come help you out with any situations. If you're unsure of something, check it out. If you see an issue, always dig, you know, the roots and what's going on below the soil can really help tell the story as well.